Okay, so here we have the first panel establishing shot as I've set it up. It's mostly working okay. I find little things I can correct. Like I can erase out this so it's behind the grass and darker. Oops. That's going to make it stronger. It's just little things. But let's say that, that that works. Now I need to move on to my next panel. How do I introduce the character? Well, I'm thinking it's going to be this one. I have to pick which mound my character will be. I think it's going to be this guy. So I'm going to mark that as orange. And then his reflection is actually this one. So I'm going to mark that as red. But I think his reflection is just going to stay. And so I might take a little bit of care to soften this transition into the water. Just using a little bit of a lower opacity soft edge brush. And just ghost it a little bit so it feels like it's in the water a little bit more. Then I'm going to go to that foreground grass and I'm going to get rid of this leaf. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, I like that reflection, but I can soften it. Okay, so now that I've got that done, I can save it. I've saved it as a PSD. This is my assets file. I need to bring in now more assets. Now, before I do that, I wanna understand what aspects are the setting and what aspects are panels. So for my setting, like my foreground grass, that's always gonna be there. I'm gonna mark those as blue. Then my next setting is here, this middle ground. And you'll see it doesn't make sense for me to move the middle ground up. It makes sense for it to be behind all these guys. And then my last Yeah, there we go. is the background. And I don't know if I'll need to actually put anything in the sky. Oh, I, I do need to. I'll need to put storm clouds and stuff in the sky later. So those will fit between my background and my middle ground. Because that will take up the sky and these background trees. So I'll show you what I mean by that just really quickly. Let's say I bring in an asset from, let's see, from assignment four. I bring in these storm clouds right between these layers, right? They don't look like storm clouds yet. Just you wait, I'll make them into storm clouds. I'm just gonna duplicate them so I get rid of the smart object. I can use adjustments and levels. So this isn't just adding characters. You can also, whoops, wrong layer. You can also add texture overlays. All kinds of things that as assets that you animate with later. And I'm actually going to play with the hue saturation because I can see the blue of the sky that I'm working with. And it has more cyan in it. So then if I use some sort of overlay, I can start to, to show how it's going to darken and change over time. This is why I like that even more. All right. And then that shows me for my for my middle ground, I can use my magic wand, select all of these blues of what was the clear sky, and I need to get rid of those with a big eraser at 100%.
and then just use the regular eraser and kind of bite away at them where these edges are too hard. This is quick and dirty, but it works. So check out how this asset will work of these storm clouds. I can simply play with the opacity right, and change the weather in this scene. And I'm already setting that up a little bit. So I might take it down to a really low opacity first, but it's still a little bit there because that helps separate the foreground, middle ground, and background already. Okay, now, I'll warp it a little too. There we go. Okay, now I've got that that scene. Now I need to build the assets for introducing my character. So I have my base character. I have the head. I've got two versions of the head. I'm going to move that out. So I think I'm going to take this head copy layer and I'm going to move that in as an asset. But I'm also going to hold down command and grab the hero body as well and move those over. Okay, move those both up to the top. See how big they are right underneath the background. And then use command T and shrink them down to roughly be the size of my guy. Now here's the thing. I'm going to zoom in on my guy eventually. So it's better for me to build it bigger than to build it small. So let's just, instead of placing him, let's just make him as big as I think he'll ever get, which is about there. Okay, now I need to start building assets with him. I'm going to make him violet. So now I'm going to take all of these other layers that aren't the setting, and I'm going to group them and I'm going to call this frame one, right? So I can just turn that off and on. And now I'm building the assets for frame two. So frame two, he's got all these head components and none of those need to change except for maybe the jaw. So if I duplicate the jaw, Move that out of the group. If I duplicate the jaw, Command J, then I can actually move it up and down. Why am I not seeing? Oh, it's because it's there. We go. So, what do I mean by that? Oh, it's tricky because I have to move it in front of that tusk, though. Okay, so if I move the jaw up and down, I'm going to make lots of jaws. I can just do that by moving, oh, I, you know what, I want to just move it back and forth like a cow. That's even better. So I have that jaw, and then I also have this jaw. And let's do one in between. Make another duplicate, and then move that in between. So jaw, jaw, jaw. Here it is. I'll do one that's way off. You have to kind of exaggerate a little bit with animation. And maybe tilt it a little bit. The others I can merge together by selecting them and hitting Command-E. 
but I need the tusks behind the jaw. And I need the jaw on top of the tusks and underneath the rest of the head. So this is how little puppetry works. Okay, so those are some little, a little jaw movement cycle. You can even make it a folder within a folder. Right, so I can call this the jaw motion cycle. And maybe I'll use it, maybe I won't, but every once in a while I can just change his jaw position, which is fun. Okay, next, and I can change his eyes and I can blink his eyes and all of that. Next, I need to worry about positioning the whole creature, right? So this head, I can transform as a whole unit right, as a group. And so I can choose how to bring it in and out. But in order to do something new with it, which I'm going to show you called Puppet Warp, I need to not have it as a group of layers. I need to have it merged as one layer. So I'm going to duplicate that whole group, and I'm going to right-click and say Merge Group into one layer. And now that head, which is free floating on the body, I can do something called puppet warp too. And I'm gonna start by duplicating it and then go up to edit and puppet warp. And what puppet warp does is on one layer that has something cut out like the head, I can now place anchor points. So I'm gonna do it at the tips of the tusks and at the base of the tusks at the tip of the nose, in between the eyes, and at the base of the neck, in three places. And then I can start moving this guy in different ways. I can start retracting him. And kind of folding him back. So I'm going backwards here. Like how is his head going to emerge? So from this to this, right? So then I can make a duplicate of that puppet warp and then do it again. So Command J, then go to puppet warp again, plot those same anchors and start shrinking it back more and more. Now you need to plot the anchors, otherwise the whole thing just changes and you can't control it. They're like all pivots on one source. And you can always plot more anchors if you need to. Hit return. So now I go from this to this to this. And in animation, you often work backwards this way. You know where you want it to end up, so now you're, you're um, working backwards to get it into the position you want. So I do Puppet Warp on a new duplicate, and now I can go a little bit more extreme. Because I know it's going to end in the right place, so I can really shrink back this head. And these tusks kind of tilt it lower. And now it goes from this to this. See how it's a bigger movement to this, ultimately to this. 